So I'm uh, talking about uh, uh, the new uh, front end based team that uh, we have created. Uh, here you can see a sample for it. Um, uh, but uh, it has um, some built in zones, or rather, it has a, it comes with a recipe that creates these zones. So these might be familiar if you have used the for those who have used the Orchard Ones uh, previous base team because has the same names. So it can be a, a common ground. And um, besides that, um, it uh, the, by default uses a, a front end uh, menu, uh, same as the admin menu, just uses the main name instead of admin and uh, we have just added the uh, our other modules uh, uh, navigations with it which can be seen somewhere yeah so it's it's very similar to normal admin menus and um, it uses bootstraps uh, Menu, so you only get one uh, sub menu layer, unfortunately. Um, besides that, you can, um, so it comes with a default layout, so you don't have to do anything with that. It automatically adds the, uh, sets up all the normal things like language, viewport, whatnot, injects the header and injects the latest bootstrap so it actually overrides the one coming from the uh coming from orchard core with the uh, one that you set up uh, in your team via npm which is good if you need some features that are newer than the ones in the release and uh, besides that it just renders the different zones with like elements that make sense usually deep but sometimes different like nav or footer um, additionally it adds a very tiny javascript helper that uh, just lets you have a ready event and uh, use a query uh, query selector all just because this is pretty much like 90 percent of why we use jquery so it makes the uh, library a bit slimmer and uh, besides that, okay, it automatically adds this uh, widget. It doesn't do anything by default, but you can uh, theme override it, and then you can inject zones here. Um, and uh, other uh, styles and whatnot. Or alternatively, you can use resource filters which is coming from the uh, this is from coming from the lombic helpful libraries uh, and then you can just register them like this in the upcoming version we will only be able we will also be able to uh, filter these resource filters by uh, by the theme that we use so there will be no conflicts if multiple themes are installed Okay, what else? And then, so when you use a theme, in this case, it's, uh, impo it includes the this base theme project, the submodules, so it's locally there, and then you import across projects. So you can see here's the base file that uh, helps us with uh, like some built-in uh, CSS variables and uh, some SAS variables. This is uh, useful because we have uh, some standardized uh, margins and gutter values, so this can and should be used uh, to have like a uniform look and feel for the page pages. And in fact, there are lots of different uh, mixings for that to have uh, to apply uh, padding and margin and uh, gap flex gap for the um, 
using these variables, so it becomes very uh, fluid. And uh, besides that, we have just a good structure for it, so this can be mimicked in any theme, and then it's a, a bit uh, uh, nicer to make it more manageable. Uh, and um, yes. Talk about the mixes. Can you elaborate a bit what the goal of this project is? It's a pretty good based theme. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, so uh, our goal is to uh, have all the like common things that you usually do when making a theme that like the layout for layout and the zones and the uh, setting up variables and, and the mix scenes. This should not be needed to repeat. You, you shouldn't need to repeat these um, for every theme and it makes it a bit, uh, um, makes it centralized. And uh, of course, like the other built-in stuff, like the uh, main menu, that's also useful. A question on the layout. Uh, why did you choose to use the code version of generating zones instead of the tag helper? Um, layout CSHML. Oh, on the left, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is uh, just made an internal structure, these zone descriptors, because uh, they wrap the elements in, in divs and also if you have an element, if you have an element that has um, like a content has a, a site first and a, a site second, for example, those are inside the element. So it makes, it handles all these wrappings, but uh, inside itself still uses the, um, Sorry. Well, it uses display async internally to render these, but adds um, uh, default classes. Like, uh, for example, you go to the uh, art here, like adds these layout uh, content classes. And uh, these are uh, these get default uh, margins. So it, it does a little bit more than zone. And you can use zone from the. From this layout injection shape if you need to add additional stuff, but the. Um, the zones themselves are rendered because uh, we want to grab them. Nice, that's, that's a lot of work. I'm not used to seeing all these underscore, underscore everywhere, but I mean, I'm too old. I'm not doing CSS in a function. Thank you. Is that it? Questions? Uh, yes, thank you. Trust me, no question. Oh, can you share the link to it? Have it? The what? The link? Because there's a, there's also an example. Well, uh, what David demoed probably this wasn't entirely clear is the example project office uh, of this. So there's the base theme, uh, which is kind of a library. Uh, and then there are examples as well, which demonstrates how you would actually mm -hmm. build a theme on top of it. Yeah, so if, if you go to our uh, open source or chart core extensions uh, uh, repository, you will find uh, a sample uh, among 
on the sample list it's in the teams and it will send you to this project which is what i have shown if you, you if you just um, you just clone this repository, then you can test it out immediately. Is it the one that you will use now with the tutorial? Yes. How do you bundle your assets? By hand. Yeah, that's, that's the question I was at. <laughs> Because yeah. I know that Zoltan was trying to do something which would bundle these. We are using Gulp. Uh, so we, we use our uh, Gulp extensions module to uh, trigger the uh, compilation on, at build, and otherwise, it's just using uh, uh, Gulp to convert these SAS assets into uh, into regular C, uh, CSS and uh, then if we need to uh, distribute them like for example through uh, Nugget then for now they are just uh, the rendered ones are included. And what is in this uh, Lamig Gulp extension recommended setup file? It's um, it it uh, adds uh, the uh, it calls the SAS through. Uh, Is it a copy of what we had in the source, or it's just adding more? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. Is it a copy of what we have in the source, or is it adding more things? Because here, like, yeah. Yeah, no, no, it just uh, transpiles it from uh, SAS into uh, regular CSS files. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah, Thanks. we are actually moving away from Gulp. Uh, the issue being that it doesn't support the latest node. Um, and um, probably uh, as a next thing, we'll just use uh, node scripts and directly do SAS compilation. Uh, we have some ongoing uh, experimental project. It's not done yet, but uh, we have this ongoing called Node Extensions. I shared a link to that in the chat too. Okay, that's, this is what I was referring to. I thought it was included, but yes, thanks. Yeah, uh, this, this is just an upcoming project. Uh, we are not finished yet. Uh, the hard part is, is uh, Packaging up the whole thing as uh, as new get. Uh, we just couldn't do that with so with our Gulp extensions project and with Gulp combined in npm and everything. Uh, 